Avery, the applications astronaut, talking to you about tangent line approximations. Now I got a question. How did the astronaut break up with her boyfriend? She told him, I need space. First thing we're talking about is a tangent line approximation. That would be using a straight line to approximate the graph of a given function. So what's going to happen is you're going to be given a crazy function like the one in blue here. And you're going to be asked to approximate the value of that blue function at some x value like 1.1 or 1.01. Something where you wouldn't be able to just evaluate it yourself without a calculator. I know in this case it's f of x is equal to x squared. But normally you're not going to be able to just evaluate it without a calculator. In order to approximate the y value of your function at that that given x value with a decimal, you're going to have to create a tangent line to your function at a specific x value that is an integer that's really close to the x value you're trying to approximate your given function at. So since we're trying to approximate our given function here at x is equal to 1.1, we're going to draw a tangent line to the curve at x is equal to 1. What that allows us to do then is if we can find the equation of that line, we can then then plug in 1.1 for x in the equation of that line and get a y value that is really close to the y value of the original function at that given x value. So the way we create the equation of that line so we can approximate the y value of the given function at a specific x value is we start with point slope form. And in point slope form, we're going to plug in the point c comma f of c for x sub 1 comma y sub 1. And c comma f of c is just the x value where you want your line to be tangent to the curve and the y value of that point. Your m, your slope, is going to be the slope of the tangent line to the curve at that specific x value c, or the derivative of your function at that specific x value c. Remember, those mean the same thing. So that's how we get this right here. Now, because we want to approximate the y value of the function, we're just going to solve for this y right here. So we just add the f of c to the other side, and that's how you come up with this tangent line approximation formula. Now let's talk about the definition of differentials. So we're going to let y equal f of x represent a function that is differentiable on an open interval containing x. The differential of x, denoted dx, is any non-zero real number. The differential of y, denoted dy, is equal to f prime of x dx. Now where the heck did this come from? Well, we know that dy dx, or dy over dx, is equal to f prime of x. The derivative of your function is equal to the derivative of your function. Both of these things mean the same thing. So the key takeaway here is that dy and dx are actually two separate things. They're two separate entities. So what I can do is I can actually take this equation, multiply both sides by dx, and I end up with this equation for the differential of y. Now, what the heck do each of these things represent? Well, dx represents the change in x. f prime of x is going to be the derivative of f at a particular x value. And then dy, you think it's going to be the change in y, but it actually is just the change in y as the change in x, or delta x, approaches zero. So what does this mean? What am I talking about? Well, the major things you need to know here are dx and delta x mean the same thing. But dy is not necessarily the change in y or delta y. It's actually approximately equal to delta y as delta x approaches zero. So let's look more closely at the difference between the differential of y, dy, and the change in y, delta y. So when delta x, or the change in x, is a very small number, you may use the differential of y, dy, to approximate the change in y, or delta y. In other words, as delta x approaches 0, dy, the differential of y, is approximately equal to delta y, the change in y. So let's examine this. In this figure, we're going to see the difference between dy, the differential of y, and delta y, the change in y. So let's imagine we have this curved black function f. And at a particular x value, c, we know the y value of our function f is f of c. That's why there's a point at c comma f of c. We then look at another x value that's a certain distance away from c. And we'll call that distance delta x or dx. 
Now, our new x value then would be at c plus delta x. And if we wanted to figure out the y value of the function f at that particular x value, we would just evaluate f of c plus delta x. That's why there's a point here at c plus delta x comma f of c plus delta x. That's the y value of this point. Now let's say, for instance, I wanted to find the difference between these two y values of each of these points. What I would do is just subtract the y values, and that would give me the change in y. That's where this equation comes from. The change in y, or delta y, is just equal to the two y values of each of those points subtracted from one another. But let's say, for instance, that this function is super crazy, and it would be nearly impossible for me to figure out what this y value is and subtract it from this y value. What I'm going to do instead is create a tangent line to our function f at x is equal to c. That's where this blue line comes in. So in order to approximate the change in the y values here between this y value here and the y value for this point right here. To approximate this change in y, what we're going to do is figure out the change in y between the, this point on our tangent line and this point right here. So how do I figure out this value right here, the change in y for our tangent line? Well, that's where this formula comes in. dy is equal to f prime of c dx. What is that? This is point slope form for our tangent line. If you recall, point slope form is just the change in y is equal to the slope times the change in x. So this is just another form of point slope form. So there are two different change in y's that we're talking about. dy is just the change in y for our tangent line, whereas delta y is the change in y for our original function. But since that is sometimes hard to find, we can use dy, the differential of y, in order to approximate delta y as delta x approaches zero. And think about this. As delta x, this change in x, gets smaller and smaller and smaller, this point right here on our graph gets closer and closer and closer to our point of tangency, and this point on our tangent line gets closer and closer and closer to our point of tangency. And notice that the difference between these two points becomes almost negative negligible as delta x approaches zero. That's why we're allowed to use dy to approximate delta y as delta x approaches zero. Now let's talk about using differentials to approximate function values. So given the differentiable function y is equal to f of x, you can approximate a specific function value using the following method. f of c plus delta x is approximately equal to f of c plus dy, which is equal to f of c plus f prime of c dx. Now this looks super complicated, but let me explain where this comes from. This is exactly like what we were talking about with the tangent line approximation, except we are using differentials now. So what's going to happen is you are going to be asked, to approximate the y value of your function at a specific x value, c plus delta x, that you can't just plug in right away and evaluate. So if you recall, when we were talking about the tangent line approximation, c would be our integer, like 1, and c plus delta x would be that 1.1 we were trying to approximate our function at. So that means our delta x then would be that 0.1, the distance that c is away from c plus delta x. Now, without a calculator, we are unable to evaluate the function at c plus delta x. So what we're going to have to do then is approximate the value of your function at c plus delta x using this tangent line. Now, if you recall, we had that tangent line approximation formula, and it looks like we're given a totally new formula here, f of c plus f prime of c dx. That's going to give us the approximate y value of our function. But don't be fooled. This approximation formula is the exact same thing Thing as our tangent line approximation formula that we talked about at the beginning of the lesson. The only difference is that instead of x minus c, the difference of x values or change in x, we are using the differential of x, which means the exact same thing. So the way this makes sense in terms of our figure over here is again, we're just approximating the y value of this function at x is equal to c plus delta x. Now, to do that, we're going to find the y value of the tangent line to the function at x is equal to c and we're going to evaluate it at x is equal to c plus delta x, and we get this y value. Notice how close these are together. That's why we're allowed to use this approximation. Now, the way we get this y value is with this formula right here, or this formula right here. This formula, the way this works, is f of c is the y value of your function and your tangent line at x is equal to c. Now, to get to this y value, 
add the change in y from this point to this point on your tangent line and remember the change in y on your tangent line is dy and we know dy is equal to f prime of c dx so that is where this formula comes from f of c plus dy or f prime of c dx gets you this y value on your tangent line which is super close to this y value on your given function especially as delta x approaches zero as delta x approaches zero these two points get closer and closer together meaning these these two y values get closer and closer and closer together making you have a more exact approximation now the last thing you may ask yourself is when do i use one or the other well we're going to go through a couple examples today show you when this ain't star trek it's example time now example one says find the tangent line approximation t to the graph of f at the given point use this linear approximation to complete the table here we have a function and we have a point of tangency and we want to find the tangent line approximation to this function at this given point and then use this table to show you how close the tangent line approximation gets to the actual function so what is the tangent line approximation we're using here are we using differentials or are we going to use the first one well since we're given a function and we're given a point initially we're just going to go ahead and use our tangent line approximation now we need to create this tangent line approximation for this function at this given point remember this point is our c comma f of c so two is going to go in for c here and here and here and then what is f of two we know that's four so we can just plug in four for f of two now f prime of two that's a little more work what is f prime of two well what's the derivative of this function at x is equal to two because that's our c value well the derivative of this function is two x to the first power and if I plug in our c value which is 2 that becomes 2 times 2 and what's 2 times 2 that's 4 we can distribute the 4 to the x and to the negative 2 subtract the 4 and the 8 and you end up getting negative 4 so here is our tangent line approximation for this particular function at this given point now we're going to show you what the actual function is at these particular x values and what our tangent line approximation gives us at each of these x values so let's start with the actual function at at 1.9 if I plug in 1.9 for x in this particular function and simplify I end up getting 3.61 now what about if I use my tangent line approximation I plug in 1.9 for x here and I simplify I end up getting 3.6 well those are close let's see if we get closer to our point of tangency what happens I'm going to plug in 1.99 to our original function here and simplify I end up getting 3.9601 what if I plug this into my tangent line approximation at that particular point I plug it in simplify I end up getting 3.96 wow out. those are even closer now what if i plug in two a point of tangency to the original function i end up getting four what if i plug in two for x in my tangent line and simplify i end up getting four yeah they're the exact same and that makes sense because this line is tangent to this function at this particular point therefore they would have the exact same y value at x is equal to two now let's check this particular x value i plug in 2.01 to the original function and i simplify i end up getting 4.0401 what if i plug that into my tangent line for x and simplify I end up getting 4.04 yeah those are super close what about at 2.1 plug that into the original function simplify I get 4.41 now I take 2.1 plug it in for x in the tangent line approximation simplify I get 4.4 notice that as your x values get closer and closer and closer to your point of tangency as delta x approaches zero the y values of your tangent line approximation get closer to the y values of your actual function so that that is why we use these tangent line approximations now we can confirm this with our graphing calculator if we were to graph the original function and the tangent line we see that at x is equal to 2 the y values of the tangent line are almost indistinguishable from the y values of our original function that's why we're doing this sorry folks this video is for kids so no jokes about how smelly Uranus is you try Okay, doing the same thing here. We want to create a tangent line approximation for this function at this particular point. So our tangent line approximation formula looks something like this. What we're going to do is we are going to use this particular point as our c comma f of c. We're going to take 4, plug it in for c here, here, and here. And now f of 4, well, we know that's 2. So we can just plug in 2 for f of 4. f prime of 4 is going to be the derivative of this function at x equal to 4. So what's the derivative of this function? Well, the square root of x is the same as x to the 1 half power. So when we take the derivative of that that's going to be one half x to the negative one half 
So if we want to evaluate that at x equals 4, it's going to be 1 half 4 to the negative 1 half power. Now, 4 to the negative 1 half power is the same as 1 over 4 to the 1 half power. Now, 4 to the 1 half power, that's just the square root of 4, which we know is 2. So we can then multiply 1 half times 1 half, and we get 1 fourth. Take that 1 fourth, distribute it to the x and to the negative 4, and you get 1 fourth x minus 1. We can then combine the 2 and the negative 1. You end up getting positive 1. So now this is going to be our tangent line approximation for this function at this particular point. Now, again, the purpose of this table is to show you the y values of your original function when I plug in each of these x values and to show you the y values of the tangent line when I plug in each of these x values and show you that as your x values get closer and closer and closer to your point of tangency, aka delta x approaches zero, your y values for your function and for your tangent line become almost indistinguishable. They are very, very, very close together. That's why we're using these types of linear approximations. So we're going to plug in 3.9 to the original function and we get the y value that goes with that. Then we're going to take that same x value, 3.9, and plug it into our tangent line approximation that we created. And we get a y value that is very close to the y value you get with your original function. We'll do the same thing with 3.99. We're going to plug that into the original function for x and we simplify and we end up getting approximately 1.99750. Take 3.99, plug it into the tangent line approximation for x, simplify and you end up getting 1.9975. Look at that. Very, very, very close together. At the point of tangency, at x is equal to 4, these should have the exact same y value. So let's see. If I plug in 4 to the original function for x and I simplify, I get a y value of 2. If I take 4 and plug it into my tangent line approximation for x, I simplify, I end up getting 2. Yes, they're the exact same because this line is tangent to this function at this given point. Now, let's go ahead and plug in 4.01 to the original function and get the y value that goes with that. Then we're going to take 4.01, plug it into the tangent line approximation for x, simplify, and we get that both of those y values are almost identical. Then we get a little bit farther away from our point of tangency. We plug in 4.1 to the original function for x, simplify, then plug in 4.1 to our tangent line approximation for x and simplify. And you see that they are still very close together, but they're less close than they were at 4.01 because our delta x is getting greater. We want delta x to approach zero because as delta x approaches zero, the y values between the original function and our tangent line approximation become super close together. And we can confirm this with our graphing calculator. You see your original function here, the square root of x is this curve. And at x is equal to 4, you see that the line that we created is tangent to our curve. Therefore, the y values of our tangent line are very, very, very close to the y values of our actual curve as x approaches 4 from the left and the right. Now, example two says use a tangent line approximation to approximate f of 0.01 for the given function. Decide whether your approximation is an over or under estimate. Now, this is typically what you're going to see when you're going to do a tangent line approximation question. You're going to be given a function and you're going to be asked to approximate the value of this function at a particular x value that is very close to an integer but is not equal to an integer. So how this works is you first need to determine what is the point of tangency to this original function that we want to create our tangent line at. Well, the x value, c, is going to be equal to the integer that is very close to the x value you're trying to approximate your function at. So what integer is very close to 0 0.01? Well, that would be 0. So our c value in this case is going to be 0, meaning my f of c value is just going to be whatever y value I get when I plug in 0 for x in this function right here. So what do I get when I plug in 0 for x here? 1 plus sine of 0. What sine of 0? That's 0. So 1 plus 0 is going to be 1. So my c comma f of c, my point of tangency is going to be at 0 comma 1. Now what I'm going to do is use my tangent line approximation formula, which is y is equal to f of c plus f prime of c times the quantity x minus c, and I'm going to plug in 0 for my c value here, here, and here. Now f of c we know is just f of 0, which we already know is 1. So 1 is going to go in for my f of c. f prime of c is the derivative of my function when I plug in 0 for x. So what's the derivative of this function? Well, derivative of 1 is 0. Derivative of sine is cosine. So the derivative of this function is just cosine of x. So when I plug in 0, it's just going to be cosine of 0. And again, I plug in 0 for c over here. Now I simplify. Cosine of 0 I know is 1. x minus 0 is just x. x times 1 is going to give me x. I can rewrite this in slope-intercept form. So I know that the tangent line approximation for this function at this given point is going to be equal to x plus 1. 
So now what I can do is use this tangent line approximation that I just found to approximate this function at x is equal to 0 0.01. So I can take 0 0.01, plug it in for x in the tangent line that I created, and when I add those together, I get 1.01. .01. Now again, I did this because I was not able to evaluate this in my head without a calculator. I can't just plug in 0 0.01 for sine and know what that is in my head and then add that to 1. So what I do is I approximate that y value by creating the tangent line approximation to this function at this given point. Now the other thing that I have to do in this problem is decide whether this approximation that I just found is an over or underestimate. So to determine whether it's an over or underestimate, what you need to do is find the second derivative of this given function. Once you find the second derivative of this function, you're going to plug in the x value of your point of tangency. In this case, that would be zero. We then look at the sign of whatever we get out. If the sign is negative, that means that your original function is concave down on that interval because the sign of the second derivative determines concavity. If your graph is concave down on a specific interval and you draw a tangent line to your function on that interval, your tangent line is going to be above your given function at everywhere except at the point of tangency. Therefore, your estimation will be an overestimation because your tangent line will be above your given function. But let's say you plug in the point of tangency 0 to the second derivative of this function, you get out a positive number. That means the original function is concave up on that given interval, meaning if you were to draw a tangent line to the curve on that specific interval, your tangent line would be below your given function, meaning that your estimation here would be an underestimate. So let's check this out. We're going to find the second derivative of this function. We already know that the first derivative of this function we said was cosine of x. So if we take the derivative of this derivative, we get our second derivative, which is negative sine of x. What we can then do is evaluate the second derivative at our point of tangency. So we plug in zero for x and we simplify it. Negative sine of zero. Oh, that's just zero. So that's neither positive nor negative, meaning your function is likely going to have an inflection point at x is equal to zero. So when this happens, you're going to have to pick another x value that you can take the sine of that you know is close to zero on the positive side because 0 0.01 is on the positive side of 0, not the negative side of 0. So what I'm going to do is plug in a positive number for x that I know I can take the sine of. How about pi over 6? If I plug in pi over 6, it's the closest positive x value to 0 on the unit circle that I know of. So sine of pi over 6 I know is going to be 1 half, and then I tack on the negative, and that becomes negative 1 half, meaning the sine of our second derivative, very close to 0 on the positive side, is going to be negative, meaning that your original function f will be concave downward at x is equal to 0 0.01, meaning if you were to draw a tangent line to the function at x equals 0 and evaluate the y value of the tangent line at x is equal to 0 0.01, it would be above the given function. Therefore, it would be an overestimate in this case. And we can confirm this with our graphing calculator. You see that your function, 1 plus sine x, does have an inflection point at x is equal to 0. However, if we look on the positive side of x is equal to 0, we see that the function is concave downward on that given interval, meaning our tangent line will be drawn above our given function on this this side of the y-axis. Therefore, it is, in this case, an overestimate. And for good measure, you can take 0 0.01, plug it into the original function in your calculator, and see that we actually do get approximately 1.01. .01. And that is almost identical to what we got with our tangent line approximation. Go ahead and check out Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey. Great film, way ahead of its time. You try! Okay, doing the same thing here. So first thing we need to do is figure out what is the point of tangency we're going to use here. What is our c comma f of c? Well, remember, c is going to be the integer closest to the x value we're trying to approximate our given function at. So that would be 1.01. .01. What's the closest integer to that? Well, that would be 1. So 1 is going to be my c value, and f of c is going to be the y value I get when I plug in 1 to this original function. So what's ln of 1? That's 0. So my c comma f of c is going to be 1 comma 0. I'm now going to use that in my tangent line approximation formula, which I know is y is equal to f of c plus f prime of c times the quantity x minus c. So I'm going to plug in 1 for c here, here, and here. Now the question is, what is f prime of c? Well, that's the derivative of this function at x is equal to 1. So what's the derivative of ln of x? That's 1 over x. So I'm going to plug in 1, and I get 1 over 1. Now what's ln of 1? We already know that. That's f of 1, which is 0. So we replace that with a 0. 1 over 1 just becomes 1, or an invisible 1 here. And we can write our tangent line approximation formula 
formula as t of x is equal to x minus 1. Now we can use this tangent line approximation to this function at this given point to approximate the value of this function at x is equal to 1.01. .01. So we're going to plug in 1.01 .01 for x in this tangent line approximation formula down here. We simplify. We end up getting this function at x is equal to 1.01 .01 is approximately equal to 0 0.01. Now we have to determine if that's an over or an under estimate. To do that, all we need to do is figure out is the graph of this function concave downward or concave upward at our given x value c. So how do we figure that out? We need the second derivative of this function, and then we can evaluate that at x is equal to 1. So how do I find the second derivative of this function? Well, I take the derivative of my derivative. So I need the derivative first. So let's take the derivative of ln of x. We know that's 1 over x. Then we need to take the derivative of this. Well, we're going to rewrite this as x to the negative first power. So when we take the derivative, we use the power rule. It becomes negative 1 x to the negative second power. Or to rewrite that with a positive exponent, it would be negative 1 over x squared. We then evaluate this at x x is equal to 1, so we plug in 1 here, and simplify, we end up getting negative 1, which we know is negative. Therefore, we can say that this function at x equals 1 is going to be concave downward. And because it's concave downward at the point of tangency, we know the tangent line is going to go above this given function, meaning your tangent line approximation is going to be above the given function, meaning it's going to be an overestimate in this case. And we can confirm this with our graphing calculator. If we graph both the function and the tangent line, we see that the tangent line in fact does go above our given function and because of that your tangent line approximation will be an overestimate. We can also confirm that our estimate here is really close to the actual value by taking 1.01 .01, plugging it in for x in the original function and simplifying in our calculator we do see that 0 0.01 is very close to the actual value of ln of 1.01. .01. Now, example three says use differentials and the graph of f to approximate the given value. And we're trying to approximate the y value of the function f here in black at x is equal to 1.9, so a little bit left of 2. Now, earlier on in the lesson, we talked about using differentials to approximate certain function values. And what we came up with was f of c plus delta x is approximately equal to f of c plus f prime of c times dx. So what we need to do in order to approximate this this given function value using differentials is we need to convert f of 1.9 into f of c plus delta x, where c is going to be our integer and delta x is going to be the change in x or difference between the x value we're trying to evaluate at 1.9 and its closest integer. So what would be the closest integer to 1.9? That would be 2. So we're going to say our c value in this case is 2, meaning our delta x, the difference between 1.9 and 2, would be 0.1. But since 1.9 is less than 2, delta x is going to be negative. So it's going to be negative 0.1. Now that I have my c and my delta x, or my dx, I can use that formula that we talked about earlier to approximate function values with differentials, f of c plus f prime of c times dx. Now, dx, we know, is delta x. It's the exact same thing. So we're going to plug in negative 0.1 for dx here. f of c is going to be my function when I plug in 2 for x. And f prime of c is going to be the slope of my function when I plug in 2 for x. Well, how on earth do we evaluate? Evaluate these. We don't have a function. We just have f. Oh, we have this graph over here. So f of 2 is going to be the y value of my black function when I plug in 2 for x. So what is the y value when I plug in 2 for x in my function? It's 1. So f of 2 is equal to 1 f prime of 2 is going to be the slope of my black function at x is equal to 2. Well, how do I find the slope of a curve? I find the slope of the line tangent to that curve. So what is the slope of this blue line that is tangent to our curve here at x equals 2? Well, it looks like we're going down 2, right 4. So that would be negative 2 over 4 or negative 1 half. So now I just simplify this. And when I multiply these two together, I get positive 0 0.05. Add the 1, I end up getting 1.05. Now, what did I just find? I found that the approximate y value of this black function at x is equal to 1.9 has to be equal to 1.05 using our differentials. You know, I'm gonna go ahead and say real talk. I'm pretty sure there's aliens. Not sure they visited, but I'm pretty sure they exist. You trap.
Okay, doing the same thing here, except this time I'm not given a graph. I'm just given the square root of 4.04, .04, and I need to use differentials to approximate this value. Interesting. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is figure out what is your function? What is my function here? What am I doing to 4.04? .04? I'm taking the square root of it. So my function is just the square root function. F of x is equal to the square root of x. Now I can see that all I'm doing is evaluating my function f at x is equal to 4.04. .04. So I'm trying to figure out what f of 4.04 .04 is approximately. To do that, I'm going to need to figure out what is f of c plus delta x, because I need this in order to rewrite my differentials formula over here. So what would be my c value? What would be delta x if I'm given 4.04? .04? Well, 4 is going to be the closest integer to that given value. So I'm going to say 4 is my c value. And then delta x is going to be the difference between the two x values, the change in x. So what is the difference between 4 and 4.04? .04? Well, that's just 0.04. And since this is greater than 4, your delta x this time is going to be positive. So now that I have my c value and I have my delta x value, I can use this differential approximation formula that we have over here. It's still a tangent line approximation, but we're just using differentials. So now what I do is I take this 4, plug it in for c here and here. I take that 0 0.04 and plug it in for my dx. I can now simplify. What is f of 4? Oh, well, I don't have a graph this time, so what do I do? Well, my function, remember, is the square root function. So what is f of 4? What's the square root of 4? Oh, that's just 2. What's f prime of 4? That's the derivative of this square root function at x is equal to 4. And earlier on in this lesson, we took the derivative of the square root function. Remember, the square root of x is just x to the 1 half power. So when we take the derivative of that using the power rule, we get 1 half x to the negative 1 half power. And when we plug in 4 for x, we get 1 half 4 to the negative 1 half power. Now what we can do is we simplify. The square root of 4 we know is 2. 4 to the negative 1 half power is the same as 1 over 4 to the 1 half power or 1 over rad 4. We then take the square root of 4, it becomes 2. 2 times 2 then gives us 4 in our denominator down here. We can then multiply 1 fourth times 0 0.04 and we end up getting 0 0.01. We add that to the 2 and we now know f of 4.04 .04 is approximately equal to 2.01 using our differential approximation formula.